Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. Uh, today we're gonna go over oil and natural gas, do our daily technical analysis update, and I'll give you my opinion. So let's jump in here and I will give you my opinion. Whoa, 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 what's going on there? There we go. Let's zoom in there, guys. So this is a big picture view. This is kind of our megaphone pattern. Uh, looks like we're trying to break to the upside. Uh, we'll see if this is, if, if we can hold up here. Uh, we've broken to the upside of this pattern. We are definitely above it. We've closed above it. Now we got to figure out what we're going to do above it. Are we going to come back down into the pattern? Are we going to go into launch mode and move higher? That is yet to be determined. And I, I, I'll tell you this. I don't really try to make predictions here. I just ride it. I wouldn't be a buyer here because we've broken out and we don't necessarily know which way this thing's going to go. Uh, but if you've already purchased, I would be riding my shares. I wouldn't be doing anything. That, that's my opinion on, on what I'm doing. Uh, natural gas, like I said, we were going to get that turning point and a pop higher potentially. Here's our pop higher, 6%. Uh, it's, this resistance line is holding. We've got a lot of support and resistance through here. So a lot of support to, to bounce from to move higher. So that looks good. XOP, yeah, we're right at that resistance uh, line. We've got a lot of resistance up here and we got to break through all this and get up there. Uh, we had a down day today with oil being up. What does that mean? Means that some of these guys don't believe the oil move is going to be sustaining, perhaps. Uh, sometimes we see that type of divergence. Uh, this isn't a reversal candlestick pattern, though. So in these types of scenarios, I don't do anything. I just sit and wait. I watch from the sidelines. I don't I don't hit the buy button. I don't hit the sell button. I just watch because uh, we're kind of at this resistance support area that we come and try to break through and uh, SM Energy got a little bit of a sell-off today, but we're inside this pattern. Everything is look is good to go, uh, as far as I can tell. It's just a regular down day. There's no reversal candlestick, nothing. Uh, Centennial Resource Development, it's just a down day. Uh, maybe this thing is is just resting before it goes full on ballistic cheetah on us uh, to the upside. I don't know if that's going to be the case. It sure looks very positive with the big buying pressure and small selling pressure. Uh, if I were to wager, I wager that this is going to break to the upside and go full ballistic cheetah uh, because we've got this big pattern here, which is another pattern inside this pattern. And when they, when, when they break these patterns, they tend to go full ballistic. Now, we haven't broken to the upside yet, but we are hugging the upside and we've got nice big bullish candlesticks with small down days. Uh, that is what you want to see on a before a break. So it's got all the characteristics that it wants to break to the upside. Uh, now it just has to do it. Uh, crew energy moving sideways a little bit. I still like crew down here, guys. 250 is where I'd be getting, you know, salivating at the mouth a little bit to buy some shares. Uh, Callum Petroleum, we're still getting like this through through this resistance area. There we go. Came on up. Uh, we're coming up to this resistance area. There's a lot of sellers up there. Once we break through it, uh, we'll be. We'll be looking really, really good on, on the on the move because it's probably going to be a big move. Athabasca Oil Corp, uh, I still like it. Uh, I own all my shares. Uh, I actually own a, a decent stake in it. We've got good volume to pop this thing higher above its support line, resistance lines that we've got. Let me back out and get those those lines in here. This is AT, uh, ATHOF. Uh, this is what we've done. We've got this resistance line that we've broken to the upside and closed above it. It looks good to run. Uh, so let's hope oil remains strong and the buyers come in here and, and, and show us that they're, they mean business. Recaf is still above its long-term support line. It's got a little bit of a down day today, nothing too large uh, on that one. Northern oil and gas was up 1.15% NOG. I call it NOG. Uh, still looking okay. Um, yeah, we got a falling wedge broken to the upside, and we're just kind of working our way higher. We do have a little bit of stronger buying or selling pressure here than buying pressure. Uh, we'll see what happens. But it seems like there's some resistance up here that we'll see if we can break through it. Crescent Point Energy, we're coming up. Uh, the cool thing here is that we've got kind of a pattern that's developing here. Uh, we're just kind of hitting our head on this resistance line, uh, and eventually we'll break. Eventually, we'll break it. GTE still remaining strong, up 3.17%. This is a clear break to the upside. Just hang on, guys. Don't do anything. 
Uh, Tellurian's trying to break through its resistance line. It's throwing in a bearish engulfing. We could see this head a little bit lower in the short, short term. Uh, Pedevco, PED, coming right up on its resistance line, showing us a little bit of resistance. Tried breaking out, but yeah, it had too much resistance there. Oasis Petroleum, it's still coiling up in this little pattern up here. Hopefully it breaks to the upside, not to the downside for a little bit larger pullback uh, consolidation period. Uh, Comstock still has the support underneath this here. We're putting in a hammer pattern. Hopefully the momentum can carry us upward. Sandridge Energy just chopping sideways. Uh, Ring Energy, REI. This one had a breakout to the upside. It has a small down day, little bloody nose. It's probably going to uh, resume itself upward over time. Uh, ZPTAF Surge Energy, uh, again, still looking okay. A little bit of a down day, nothing too worried, nothing to get too worried about. Uh, Tamarack Valley Energy just chopping sideways a little bit uh, up here. Getting, getting into some, I would say, in this area, it's just a little bit of selling pressure all through here. It's kind of just chopping back and forth like that. Uh, but it is a breakout uh, on the long term, so everything still looks really good. We could return do a return move back to the to the breakout, uh, it's a potential. doesn't mean I'm calling for it. It really depends on what oil does. Uh, oil, the OIH, oil service, we've got this, this, uh, ascent, this is a rising wedge. We tried to break here. We had a little bit of a down day. We're kind of back in the pattern. Again, we got to see what happens. This is not a reversal candlestick move. So everything could still be fine. Um, Tetra Technologies, this is almost like a bullish or bearish engulfing. It's a very even day. So the buyers equal the sellers. Uh, we'll see where this thing goes. Rig, rig getting a little bit of selling pressure here. Uh, looks like we're battling between the buyers and the sellers. Uh, we've got this support line right underneath it. Uh, getting pumped up, small little down day. Uh, we call it a bloody nose next to a large up day like this. Uh, that's usually a continuation pattern eventually to move on up. Uh, EXTN is getting a little bit of selling pressure. Uh, we were barely up today, but we're getting these little wicks at the top. Uh, we are encountering some sellers up here. VAL, Valeris, just chopping sideways. Uh, looks like we're putting in, I could just draw it in here, a little pattern here. Uh, hopefully we can break to the upside of that pattern. Uh, MRM or MMA Offshore Limited. Uh, I like looking at this from the big picture view. The volume's kicking up. Uh, we are breaking to the upside. This will be a big move to the upside. Uh, let it make you money. Five shares way down here and just hold on. If you can buy it. I, I don't own any of MMA. I just don't I don't have access to, to buy it. Um, Tidewater I own. A little bit of a, of a bearish piercing pattern where we could head a little bit lower in the very short term. Kind of a reversal candlestick. Uh, but again, I would be a, a, a holder of Tidewater. Uh, this chart break is fantastic, and it's going to move probably far higher than where we are today. A little bloody nose on next year oil field solutions uh, on the dailies, a little bloody nose here. Um, usually they continue upward. Looking at CHX, getting a little bit more selling pressure here. Might seem a little bit more of a, of a, of a sell-off pullback in CHX. Uh, WHD, just chopping sideways, still looks okay. Uh, OII, another one chopping sideways. We are in a rising wedge pattern. Some of these like to break to the downside. It's a rising wedge, and they usually resolve themselves lower. Uh, Noble Energy, chopping sideways here. We've got the resistance line that we haven't broken yet. And then HLX, uh, a little bit of a down day today. Not quite a bloody nose. Well, it's a little bloody nose. Um, but we've got bigger buying pressure than selling pressure. Hopefully this uptrend can continue. Uh, so, and then just, and then moving on to this, Yan Coal for coal. This is coal here, guys. I'm just throwing this in. Yan Coal still looks absolutely amazing to me. Uh, this would this was my top pick for a, a chart pattern. You've got this massive pattern that's broken. Uh, we've had this nice little pullback, and then this thing looks really good to move higher. Uh, that is Yan Coal Australia. Looks really good. Nice, good movement already. I would have been a buyer down here on this return move. Um, and, and White Coal. This is Whitehaven Coal. This thing still looks good. Uh, BTU, uh, Peabody Energy. I'm just kind of going over some coal ones. This is all energy related. I don't really go over coal that often. Uh, but this guy's been moving on higher. I probably wouldn't have guessed 
this move here. It looks kind of unorthodox. It's kind of a rounding bottom type move. Uh, we are coming up into some resistance uh, soon with with Peabody. Uh, just to give you kind of guys, you know, some kind of an overview. I mean, oil has been really strong. Uh, so I see no reason to sell oil. The inventory levels are really low. We're continuing to run deficits in oil. So uh, you know what I do? I don't do anything. I just hold on to my shares. I don't. There's nothing for me to do. Um, these are really good fundamental conditions. Uh, even if the technicals look weak, I don't really care. I'm just going to hold on to it. Uh, there's there's no point to to sell. And I use the technicals to confirm my, we'll call it the the fundamentals. And in 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 moves, you're going to have waves. They're going to have impulse moves higher and then consolidation periods. Impulse move higher, consolidation periods. Some people think they can trade the consolidation periods. They can trade in, they can trade out, they can be flexible. Uh, I don't do that. I just play the big picture move. If we're going higher and the inventories are low, I'm not going to concern myself with the pullbacks. That is the way that I'm wired. That's how I want to play it. If you guys want to try to do the pullbacks, I mean, that's up to you. Um, sometimes they're really hard to uh, to figure out. And sometimes you get them wrong. Uh, sometimes I'm going to get, I'm going to see these charts wrong. Because remember, we're, we're playing with probabilities here. We're not playing with absolutes. Um, when you have massive opportunities with valuations at 100-year lows uh, for commodities in general, and you have a shift of interest rates, and you have all these big underlying structural shifts where money is going to start rotating in mass, um, I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to wait, especially at these valuations that are so low. Uh, so another thing I want to talk about is coal. Coal, they really aren't going to get money. There, there's going to be no new coal, um, no new coal mining areas for probably ever. <laughs> what what this is doing is they're literally setting up a monopoly on coal. Like if 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 the renewables don't work and we still have to burn a lot of coal, uh, and these people who have coal mines that are already established. That's kind of it. They, are, they, there's, they literally have a moat. They literally have blocked all new coal uh, people from coming in. And you could probably buy existing coal assets from some of these uh, major diversified mining companies. But uh, beyond that, I mean, it, it, they're, they're kind of, it, you, you have whatever you have. And the price, I think, could go ballistic to the upside. Uh, I, I'll admit it that I didn't view coal um, as much as as favorable as I do now, but now I'm coming to realize that coal is probably a very good bet uh, for a long term hold, medium to long term hold, because they're not building any new coal mines. Uh, so you literally have governments blocking everyone from doing something that's new, creating a moat for the business of coal mining companies. Um, and and if we have energy problems in the future, which we do have energy problems. Uh, Coal could be a good alternative, and these are the only guys that can provide the coal. So that's that's one to look into perhaps as well are some of these coal companies. And uh, I'm playing with natural gas. I'm a huge natural gas bull. And natural gas, I think we're going to have problems, which will then spill over into coal, which then spills in over into oil, and then will spill it over into uranium. Natural gas will be the epicenter. Uh, oil and natural gas will be the epicenter of this energy crisis, because what we're doing is we're transferring everything into natural gas. It, uh, the renewables, uh, if they don't, if they don't operate the way that we want them to operate, if they don't generate the power that we have or that we need, I should say, uh, they're going to run natural gas. Natural gas is going to get into shortages. I, I just, that's what I see. And then it's going to blow up into everything else. So I, I do think that everything will benefit from the natural gas shortage, uh, but I was playing it directly with natural gas. If you guys like this content, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and thank you for listening. This is Finding Value.